Welcome to the Microsoft Learning Module on creating adaptive card extensions for Viva Connections. This Microsoft Learning Module will introduce you to the creating custom adaptive card extensions, also known as ACES, with the SharePoint framework, also known as SPFX, that can be used in Viva Connections dashboards and Viva Home. These ACES will work with all of Viva Connections clients, including the desktop and mobile apps. In this section, we're gonna look at adaptive card extensions and explain what they are. We'll then look at the different types of views, the different types of cards, how to create adaptive card extensions, configurable properties with adaptive card extensions, and the component state within an adaptive card extension. Customers can customize Viva Connections and Viva Home in multiple ways to create tailored experiences for their customers. Developers can customize and extend Viva Connections with web parts created using the SharePoint framework, also known as SPFX. Editors can then place the web parts in content areas of pages and configure them to create a customized experience for users. Developers can also create SPFX application customizers, a type of SPF extension that can inject HTML and JavaScript into the header and footer of all pages on a site. Another type of extensibility option developers and editors can use to customize Viva Connections and Viva Home is with adaptive card extensions, also known as ACEs. ACEs are similar to web parts, but primarily use adaptive cards to implement the user experience. In this unit, you're gonna learn what ACEs are, how they work, and the basics of creating a custom ACE to extend your user's Viva Connections and Viva Home experience. The Viva Home and Viva Connections dashboard and mobile experience can be customized and extended using ACEs. Developers can use the SPFX to create custom ACEs to enable customized experiences in Viva Connections dashboards and the Viva Connections mobile app. The ACEs enable users to quickly view information at a glance or interact with cards in a focused and mobile-friendly experience. Developers can create a new ACE using the SharePoint framework and Microsoft added support for creating ACEs to SPFX version 1.13 that was released in late 2021. This added a fourth component type capability in addition to the existing support for web parts, extensions, and library components. An ACE has a similar structure to a web part, so if you haven't experienced creating web parts, the process for creating ACEs will look quite familiar. Like web parts, ACEs can be developed and tested using the SharePoint hosted workbench in an existing SharePoint online site. Now let's look at the different types of cards. Viva Connections and the SharePoint framework support a few different types of cards for ACEs. These include the basic card view, the image card view, and the primary text card view. Each of these different card types has subtle differences in the properties that you can set on the card view. The basic card template supports two properties. The first is the title of the ACE, typically set when creating the project with the Yeoman generator for the SharePoint framework. And the second is the primary text of the ACE that's used to provide some context to the user about the card. The image card template supports three properties. The first is the title of the ACE, just like the basic card has. And this is typically set when creating the project with the Yeoman generator for the SharePoint framework. Also like the basic card, the second property is the primary text of the ACE that's used to provide some context to the user about the card. And then the third property is the image URL of the image that is used to display on the card. When the card size is set to large, the image is gonna be rendered to the right of the card as you see in the picture here on the slide. But when the image card is set to size medium, the image is gonna be rendered above the card's title. Now the primary text card template supports three properties. Just like the other two, the first property of title is the title of the ACE that's typically set when creating the project with the SharePoint uh, framework Yeoman generator. The second property, also like the other two, is the primary text of the ACE that's used to provide some context to the user about the card. And the third property is the description of the ACE, and that's used to display more textual information to the user. Now let's look at the different types of views that we have with an adaptive card extension. The card view is the default view of an ACE when it's rendered. Card views are rendered in one of two sizes, medium or large. You can see that both pictures of them listed here. The medium view can contain some text and one or no buttons as you see on the image in the bottom left. 
but the large view option for the card can contain text and up to two buttons and optionally an image, as you see there on the card that says that has the title of shifts and the primary text of you're on the clock. Now, when you're creating a new ACE, you'll select one of three available card templates that we went over in the previous slide that define what properties are going to be available within the card view. The other type of view that's supported by ACES is the quick view. The quick view is rendered based on an interaction with the card view. Now these can be displayed when the user selects the card view or when one of the buttons is selected or when some other action happens. But unlike the card view, the quick view rendering is implemented with an adaptive card JSON schema. Developers can make the quick view dynamic by using the adaptive card templating capability where placeholders can reference data that's bound to the, to the template as a separate object. The way this is done is that you provide a JSON object that's just a, a bunch of name value pairs that can also contain an array of data. And then within the adaptive card JSON, you're gonna use the nomenclature of a dollar with the curly brackets around it um, as the property that you wanna define. It looks very much, the syntax looks very much like a JavaScript or a TypeScript template literal. Now let's talk about developing adaptive card extensions. Developers can create adaptive cards using the same Yeoman generator for SharePoint that's used to create a SharePoint framework web part, an extension, and a library component. An ACE is implemented using the adaptive card extension TS file, and this file exports three different types of members that are used to implement the adaptive card extension. An interface that's going to define the public properties and state for the component, constants that define unique IDs for each of the quick views used in the ACE, and a class that acts as the hub for the ACE. The ACE contains a few different methods that are similar to a SharePoint framework web part. The onInit method is used to handle the state initialization, registration, and preloading of all the tasks. We're going to revisit this method and some of the topics later in this module. The get property pane configuration and load property pane resources methods are used to initialize, configure, and load the property pane for adaptive card extensions that have configurable public properties. To better support the ACE mobile experience, the load property pane resources method uses Webpack's chunking feature to break out the business logic and script files that implement the property pane and load them only when the property pane is activated. This optimization makes it so users who are consuming the ACE don't always load the property pane script that they won't use. For example, just like a, a viewer of the uh, ACE, the property pane is only accessible to editors on the site. And then finally, the render card method. This is similar to the web parts render method. It returns the ID of the card view that should be used to render out the ACE. And here in this slide, we're just listing that out as a constant. That's what we get in the default code when we create a new project. Now the card view for an ACE is implemented in the cardview.ts file. And these are generally stored in the card view subfolder within the adaptive card uh, extension component. The initial card view file that's created by the Yeoman generator contains three methods. The card buttons method returns zero, one, or two objects of type iCardButton. These define the buttons that are rendered on the card view. Different card view templates restrict how many buttons can be displayed depending on various factors. For instance, the primary card template can only show two buttons when its size is set to large. The data method returns an object that is bound to the card, the card views template using the adaptive card templating functionality. The properties on this object should match the properties that are supported by the current adaptive card extension card template that's selected when creating the project. For example, and then finally the card selection method. This is used to control what happens when the card view is selected. Now, like SharePoint Framework Web Parts, ACES support configurable properties to give editors the ability to customize each instance of an ACE. The implementation is similar to Web Parts in the sense that properties are defined in an interface in the same file as the component. Now, like Web Parts, the default values can be set in the components manifest.json file in the property called preconfigured entries.properties object. Now, one difference from a Web Part is that an ACE is designed around a mobile first approach. For the property pane, as I previously discussed, this is implemented by separating the code that's used to define the property pane rendering from the rest of the component. The initial code that's created for an ACE by the generator puts the property pane definition in a separate file. 
So here you can see an example of a adaptive card extension where I've opened it up in edit mode and then I've clicked on the pencil icon to launch the property pane uh, in the right hand side. And here you can see where I can modify public properties that are defined on my, web, my adaptive card extension. If you've built a SharePoint framework web part using React, you're probably familiar with the concept of component state. ACES implement the same concept in that when the state changes, it triggers the ACE to be re-rendered. The state of the component is accessible not just in the ACE itself, but in all its views. And this includes both the card view and all quick views that are used by the ACE. The component state, like its public properties, is defined in the interface in the same file as the component. In this section, we learned what ACEs are, how they work, and the basics of creating a custom ACE to extend your users' Viva connections and Viva Home experience.